Hi everyone, it is May 7, 2019. I just want to give you a weather update as quickly as I can. Starting with the Oroville Dam, the, the amount of water is inching up, as you can see, and the latest data that came in, which was just a few minutes ago at 12 o'clock California time, 887.21 feet. It's inching up and I'm not sure. I, is it rain? Is it snow melt? Is it the reduction in the outflow? Uh, I don't know. But when I see it inching up, that's not good. Okay. So, farmland, heartland, all of the flooding, it's going to impact all of us. Farmers have signaled intentions to plant more corn and less soybeans in 2019. How many acres actually get planted may well depend much more on Mother Nature than the best of intentions. Parts of the Corn Belt have had exceptional amounts of snow and rain this winter and spring. Indeed, it is still raining in many places. The result has been flooding in the greater Mississippi River Valley, especially on the, along the upper Missouri River and the tributaries that feed it. Parts of South Dakota are so wet that trucks have been banned from gravel roads and some highways. Our perspective is that while the soggy lands may eventually dry sufficiently for planting crops, the total acreage plan will be less than intended and the yields from some of the soggy areas that do get planted will be impaired. So far, corn and soybean markets are relatively complacent and seem to disagree with this analysis. Is corn vulnerable to a price breakout? We will see. We will see. More farms have been flooded in the recent days. Great Lakes water levels expected to set record highs. And you got another press conference from Governor Cuomo in New York. He is in Jefferson County, New York, which was flooded in, what, a year and a half ago or two years ago. Listen to what he has to say. We have to acknowledge as a state, as a country, that there is a new normal when it comes to uh, weather patterns. And I can't tell you how many times I've been out there and I've been told this is a once in a 100 year flood, once in a 500 year flood. Yeah, call it what you want, but it now happens five times a year. So these old definitions of once in 100 years, once in 500 years no longer matter. And the places that flood continually get flooded. And what we've done in the past is the federal government's protocol is we'll replace what was there after an emergency. But if you replace what was there and you don't improve, then the next time there's another emergency, you're going to be back in the same situation. New York State spent $100 million after 2017. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to replace what was there anymore because what was there doesn't work. It was built at a different time for a different reality. Let's build to the new reality, the new normal, and let's acknowledge the fact that we have these vulnerabilities, uh, 2017, 2019. Uh, if this is going to happen every couple of years, then let's invest the money, and rather than replacing the infrastructure, let's build a new and a better infrastructure that is improved and can handle these new normals. The new normal, our new world, our new way of life with new definitions. More money is going to be taken out of your pocket. And what he had said about the federal government replacing what was there is a lie. FEMA comes in, buys up a lot of homes, buys up whole uh, towns and the condition is that they do not replace what was there. You cannot build structures on FEMA land that has been purchased 
because they don't want you in this area. And that's why you're being flooded over and over again. Governor Cuomo knows about weather modification. He knows that this is being deliberate, uh, that this is deliberate. I want you to take a look at what a um, subscriber alerted me to yesterday. Why am I here? Look at these microwaves being sent into this storm. This was May 6 at, I think it was about um, 4 o'clock. So like around 3 o'clock central time. You see these microwaves hitting this storm? You do see that, right? Okay. Let me show you what was going on um, last night. This was at 11.30? Or no, it was just before midnight. Doppler radar comes into action nighttime, early morning. Now all of these blue pulses that you see, very dangerous to our overall well-being, to life's overall well-being. But as you can see, look at this. The heartland, central plains, farm country. This is Kansas, Missouri, and I go over to the composite radar. Well, that was just to check out the chemtrail spraying. But yes, you've got fabulous nectaride harp rings throughout this entire storm. And there were tornadoes, there was hail, which I'll show you in a minute. Minute. The mouse is showing you all of the, the circular patterns in this storm. Very defined lines. That is the high frequency heating coming from our Doppler radar stations. And um, they were throughout this entire storm. And it only got worse as time went on. You see them? You do see them, right? All these circles, that means that frequencies were very active in this storm to bring about the flooding and the, um, well, the severe weather that is our new normal. Well, it's our new normal because man is creating it. That's what high frequency heating of the atmosphere does. Right here. So yes, it is man-made. It is man-made. It is man bringing about all of this destruction. This was later on. Now we're into May 7. And look at these. Next rad stations, the radar stations. They've only heated up. Sorry for the noise. Uh, just far more intensely in just a little bit. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight that I can count. 
even not looking very carefully. Nine. They're all over. They're throughout this entire thing. Uh, this <laughs> entire thing. The storm. And frequencies were blasted from Missouri in the St. Charles area where the levees are breaching and flooding is occurring. More farms flooded out. Okay. Um, let's do one more. Five, seven at uh, eight this morning. More microwaves being sent into the storm. And as you can see, it's still right smack in Kansas, Missouri. Right along the Mississippi River. So they're holding it pretty much constant in this area where you have just been <laughs> living flood for like two months already. All right. Um, At Jefferson County, get ready for more flooding. Houston, storms could bring river flooding to the Houston area this week. I will link below to everything. Violent storms to keep pulsing through south central U.S. through midway week. Funny that they should use that word pulsing because that's what they do with the frequencies. They pulse the frequencies into these storms to manipulate, to modify, to steer, to intensify. Pop-up storms. All of these new terms. Dry line thunderstorms, pop-up storms, new normal, because man is creating it. Pop-up storms for the Northeast. And there's far more flooding taking place in South Florida. And Mother Nature is not done? No, man is not done. So the flooding in Florida, a lot of cars damaged due to this flooding. Unbelievable. And people think this is climate change. We see this over and over and over again here, an Instagram uh, video. It's insane, she says. Yes, it is insane. But when man is using weather as a weapon, this is what can occur. More tornadoes, severe weather. We saw these images in the late night into the overnight. Lewis, Kansas, one of the tornadoes, one of 111 severe storm reports. And this morning, we've actually got people that are being rescued from their homes in eastern Kansas. Kansas City swallowed in strong to severe storms. Tornado on the ground, guys. Illuminated by lightning on the Kansas night sky, one of three reported tornadoes ripping across the high plains. Winds up to 80 miles per hour, toppling trees, bringing down power lines. 56 Highway, covered in hail. Near Burlingame, Kansas, hail smothering the highway. The tarmac at the Hutchinson Airport damaged by this lightning strike. So much hail in Colorado, it looked like snow. And look at this video just released from Sunday's severe storms in Nebraska. Watch as this woman dashes to get into her front door, fighting high winds to make it in. At least 100 mile per hour winds near Lincoln, ripping apart a backyard fence and a playground at another home. So who has to be on the lookout for images like that today? Let me show you. It's for images like that today. And this was posted. 
uh, just a couple of hours ago. Well, I'll play it out. It's all going to come along this dry line, as we call it. You've got the dry air on the west, the moist air there. It's going to pop this afternoon and evening. You're going to end up seeing Lubbock to Amarillo, strong to severe storms that could bring 70 plus mile per hour winds. We've actually got a really enhanced risk here of seeing that in the red area. But anywhere from Wichita down into Texas needs to be on alert. And it doesn't end there, George. We see that the next two days, Dallas, Fort Worth, over to Shreveport, up to, say, Kansas City and St. Louis, over to Jackson, Mississippi, have to be on the lookout. It's not just damaging winds, it's hail and, of course, tornadoes. Roughly through the middle. It's hail and, of course, tornadoes. Well, what I just showed you on radar, all of the harp next red rings, they can create tornadoes for you. Another levy in danger as seemingly endless flood continues. St. Charles, Missouri. Residents of, of a small Missouri town were busy Tuesday sandbagging yet another levee, being threatened by a seemingly ceaseless flood. Pine Oak levee protects a little over 100 homes in Winfield, Missouri. How many levees have been breached? St. Charles County. This is from the breach yesterday. Well, more farmland has been flooded out. It's hard to watch this over and over again, but I can't not post, I can't not document, and I certainly cannot doc, uh, can't not document man's hand as seen on radar. Now there seems to be a gasoline spill that has taken place in Missouri with this breach, St. Charles, which I will Hopefully it has it on this video. Yeah, quite a lot of flooding taking place. And look, it's farmland. They're doing this intentionally. Oh my God. It, it just never stops. It never friggin' stops. Oh. That great American flag. All right, where is that flooding? Hang on. Here is a 35 minute flyover of the flooding in St. Charles, Missouri. But I want to show you uh, this gasoline leak. And I tried to find information on it, and I can't. OK, sweetie. And it's, uh, I don't know if anybody can find any information on this. Uh, I, it appears to be a station for boats. But there's been a massive gasoline leak here. Wow. Well, not good. All right, I'll end with this, and everything will be linked to below. If that, that was taken care of, this wouldn't be here. Cassandra Rizzo shows us flood debris that's built up along Indian Creek. This is all along. You just, we can't access it everywhere. She says it never used to flood here. The stress is awful. And, you know, a lot of us still aren't even back to normal from, you know, two years ago. Oh, I used to have a pool there. July 2017, this is what her backyard looked like. And then right down there, 
You'll see, you can see the dumps. Uh, Two years later, four dumpsters still line the creek, she says, between Warnell and Holmes. It's way out of control because it is damning itself in different places. This bumper is what's left of a car that was lodged in the tree. If I get hit again, I can't do a third time. She's tired of the flooding and the toll it's taking on the Indian Creek Trail. How about we fix the problem? How about we just fix the problem? Walls and structures are washing out. Somebody's going to get hurt. What's worse, the trail that's used by so many is disappearing. I mean, we are standing on air right now. She hopes rather than flag the issues, the city solves the problems. And everybody just sits back and holds their breath and waits, and it will happen. It will happen. It is a certainty. And it may very well happen once again very soon. Um, your town officials, your city officials, your state officials, your federal officials, they are not doing what needs to be done. As you can see, uh, all of this debris is still sitting there two years later. Come on, really? All right. The only way, you know, she talks about fix the problem. That's right. Well, everybody in their community, you need to find out what is taking place in your community and demand that your town officials, your city officials, actually fix the problems, demand it, and if they don't, stop paying their salary. Boy, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get Americans to just unite over not paying taxes anymore. Hmm. Have a good day, guys.